This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Wednesday, May 17th. I'm Stephanie Haney and let's get right to what matters most in Northeast Ohio this afternoon. There are explosive allegations of a sexual abuse cover-up in the Ashtabula City School District. A civil lawsuit filed by a group of former students accuses a former teacher and school board member of sexual misconduct. They say it happened decades ago and that the school district covered it up. Six former Ashtabula High School students accused Christine Seifert of grooming the students, quote, by allowing them to have access to her house and vehicle, providing alcohol to them and engaging in provocative sexual behavior and activity with them. One of the women who has stepped forward is Shelly Chapman. The lawsuit claims that Chapman's parents notified the district, but nothing was done, and that basketball coaches heard of the allegations but threatened to suspend the student players they heard about it from. The allegations are from the late 80s, so long past the statute of limitations for a criminal case. This was brought to light in an anonymous letter to the school board in November of 2021 that exposed Seifert's alleged misconduct. Now attorney Eric Long is looking to hold her accountable. We'd like to think that these people are in a position to help our students, help our children. But ultimately, it falls on the board, it falls on the district as a whole uh, to protect our children, and certainly that didn't happen here. Now, in a recent statement, a spokesperson for the district said it will cooperate fully with the legal process as the lawsuit moves forward and said that the district investigated the claims when they came to light back in 2021, but that prosecutors declined to file charges because so much time had passed. Now, in Menor, a man who fell while working on the Hendricks Road Bridge has died. City officials say last week Raul Perez fell about 20 feet from an extension lift while being lowered back down from the bridge. Perez worked for Beaver Excavating and was painting the bridge when it happened. We're told it appears that the door on the lift opened unexpectedly and he wasn't wearing a safety harness. We're certainly thinking of his family and friends today. And now we have our first look at the 100-day plan from incoming Cleveland Metropolitan School District CEO Dr. Warren Morgan. Dr. Morgan says the focus will be on listening, learning, and leading. The plan includes creating a new advisory group made of students, teachers, parents, and community members. Dr. Morgan also wants to partner with Cleveland businesses to create career paths for students. Now, meanwhile, business seems to be booming in Columbus and more companies are headed there. And just today, the White House said it would create a workforce hub there. Now, that is great news. But in Northeast Ohio, people are asking, what about Cleveland? Matt Rascone talked with city officials about why Cleveland seems to be being left out. With all that Cleveland has to offer. We have great schools. We have great parks. The city has struggled to bring in new business. Businesses are going where it's easy to do business, where there may be green fields out in the suburbs. All you have to do is look at Columbus to see where Amazon, Google and Intel are expanding. And the White House announced they would set up a workforce hub there. So why is Cleveland missing out? And all you have to do is drive through our neighborhoods to see the crumbling, half-crumbled buildings, the vast swaths of vacant land. City officials say it's the lack of shovel-ready land that often turns companies away. We get a lot of emails within City Hall asking, hey, do you have 20 acres? Do you have 40 acres? Do you have 10 acres? But oftentimes the case is, no, we, we don't. That's the issue that brings development chief Jeff Epstein to committee. We believe that we can compete with anyone in the world uh, for businesses. Uh, we just need to put this piece in place in terms of getting sites ready so that there's a place for businesses to land. The city's proposal includes a $100 million site readiness fund. The administration and this council are looking at sites from east to west. All in an effort to bring in business and jobs and curb the dwindling population in Cleveland. We recognize that it's an issue and we are putting our best foot forward to engage other partners to ensure that we are ready uh, when that time comes. Thank you for that reporting, Matt. Now, Epstein said he believes that site readiness is one of the critical investments, one of the most critical investments the government can make. This proposal still needs to be talked about more before a Cleveland City Council can take a look at it. Now, in East Palestine, the Ohio Department of Agriculture says plant tissue sampling on crops has wrapped up. The report shows plant materials collected from the area are not contaminated with toxic substances from the February 3rd train derailment. Now, as of this morning, more than 17 million gallons of liquid wastewater and nearly 42,000 tons of waste soil have been hauled from the crash site. 
And in related news, state officials have partnered with the Center of Science and Industry to host a community event promoting STEM learning and to distribute 250 free Chromebooks to East Palestine City Schools. Now today, we can tell you when the new development coming to the Cedar Lee Business District in Cleveland Heights is expected to be complete, and that'll be 2025. The city broke ground on the $66 million Cedar Lee Meadowbrook project yesterday. Almost five acres of parking areas and vacant land at the southeast intersection of Cedar and Lee Roads will be developed, changed into 206 apartment units, roughly 8,200 square feet of retail space, and open gathering spaces. Beautiful plans. All right. Now here are the national stories that you need to know about. Police in New Mexico have identified the shooter in Monday's mass shooting that killed three people. Farmington police say 18-year-old Bo Wilson, who was killed by responding officers, was firing randomly when he shot and killed three women. Investigators say there happens to appear to be no connection to the shooter, between the shooter and the three victims. According to police, Wilson used at least three weapons, one of which he purchased legally in November of last year. Now, the former CEO of Collapsed Silicon Valley Bank says he's truly sorry for the bank's failure and the crisis it triggered. Greg Becker testified before the Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday. He said the collapse was a shock to him and added that he worked closely with advisors and the bank was actively responding to concerns from regulators when this happened. The committee's chairperson, our Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown, blamed the financial institution for ignoring warnings from officials. He says SVB and Signature Bank were fatally mismanaged. And parts of Yosemite National Park are closed again. This is as California's historic snowpack starts to melt. Now, this is a major flood risk. And now, new aerial expeditions above the snowpacks are collecting first-of-their-kind data. They're using high-tech sensors. And the goal is to give water districts in the area a much better model of the snowpack so the state has a better idea of when and where flooding could happen as this snow melts. Now back here at home, Akron Cannon Airport is bringing bees to its airfield. The airport will be hosting 60 colonies of bees from Hartville Honey Bee Farm to help grow bee populations in Stark and Summit counties. So the airport is reminding us that bees are an important part of the ecosystem. They're also going to be collecting honey from the colonies to sell, and those proceeds will go to environmental initiatives in Akron. This is a long-term project, so hopefully you'll be able to get your honey there soon. And that brings us to time to tell you about our question of the day. Cleveland is looking into what it would look like to redevelop the area where Burke Lakefront Airport is now. And our Mike Polk Jr. has some ideas. You'll see those today at 4 p.m. We want to know what would you like to see in that waterfront area. Post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page. We'll talk about that during What's New at 4 o'clock. There is just no shortage of opportunity, I think, along our waterfront. I would love to see something that's going to bring people to that space and a little green space. That's my personal opinion. Thanks for being with us for today's edition of 3 News Daily. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio.